Hi, and welcome to the Crit Hit Wild podcast, where we cover all things Marvel Crisis Protocol, and we do a new character every week. This week, we're going to be talking about Shocker, and I'm your host, Fred. I'm Brad. And I'm Steven. Hey, guys. Uh, we are down a Brandon, mostly because of scheduling. It's uh, We're recording at a weird time. It's early in the morning on Sunday. <laughs> so... Uh, I, how how are the two of you doing? How are you doing, Brad? Uh, good. That's good to hear. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm doing well, thank you, Fred. That's I'm glad to hear it. Uh, it is the day before the eclipse. Just giving everyone a little bit of time, place in where this episode's taking place, and I'm excited. I'm up in northern Pennsylvania. You might hear me outside a little bit i'm in the process of walking a dog and i'm feeling real good i'm excited and i'm also excited to talk about some games today but before we do that let's talk about the tournaments that are coming up later this month so coming up on the 13th of april there's going to be a tournament in south charleston at lost legion games comics <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that is going to be attended by myself, Brad, and probably Brandon. I hope. So, uh, if you're in yeah. the and 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 Borco will be there, and Aaron will okay. probably be there, and three people from Princeton will be there. Oh boy, we're gonna have a turnout. We're gonna have at least eight people. Oh, that's nice. It'll be it'll be good to have have uh, a tournament take place. Have some people to fight, play that aren't our normal people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, coming up on April the twentieth, that is uh, there is going to be a tournament in Pittsburgh at Fabricators Forge. Uh, that is run by Bryce. He is uh, he's real good at running tournaments. It's going to be. I don't know how many people they're expecting, but it's those are usually really, really good events. So if you're in northern Pennsylvania, head on over there and play some games with that crew. Uh, then coming up on the 27th of April, there is going to be a tournament at Recess Games in North Olmsted, Ohio. And that is Stephen's home store. Uh, and I myself am planning to head up there to participate so Absolutely. yeah i want I, I i've not i've actually never been to steven's home store and that seems like it's unfair since he comes to ours pretty regularly <laughs> so yeah uh I, it's about time for me to step up and and do a little bit of traveling myself well thank you um uh for those people read um fabricators forges in the pittsburgh area so that's more of a uh, southwest pennsylvania Oh no. yeah, you're right. It, yeah, you're correct. You're correct. Uh, uh, I am currently uh, much further north, and that's just in my head. I no, said no, north. no. That's north. fine. I I just didn't want that's to have mistake. people get confused there. So. Right, you're right. You're correct. Okay, so uh, let's move on to that the games that we've played recently segment. Uh, I do have games this week. I have a game that I played. And yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> I played a game on Thursday uh and it was against Brad. And uh we were doing hey, his that's the me. gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh we were doing gymnastics league where we get one free gym to put on to any character we want and then we can put more gems on any characters we want, but they cost the normal threat value. But you can put one on any character you would like who's, I think it's who's six threat or less. Is that the limitation? Brad? What? Huh? Uh, I spaced okay. out. Uh, Sorry. Uh, you can put the gem on, it, on any six threat or lower character that you wish. Yes. Uh, uh, well, except... I was playing... Except we found out Except that Cosmic. Cosmic Ghost Rider was banned from having a gym. 
Yeah, I think, understandably. Uh, or I played, um, I played Spider Foes with Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Rhino, uh, Black Cat, and Lizard. Uh, and Brad, I think, do you want to say what you were playing? I played uh, Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Psylocke, and the new Captain Marvel. And I had Reality on Psylocke and Power on Captain Marvel. Yep. Uh, this game started off going very poorly for me. Like, uh, round two, he he dazed... Uh, he, he dazed Green Goblin, he dazed uh, Rhino, uh, and he dazed Black Cat, I think. I think you dazed three of my five characters, and I did not... I don't think I hit anybody. I don't think I did you damage. <laughs> it was it was like a case where a, a turn did not go very well for me. Uh, and then the following round, Green Goblin started the the activations by throwing himself into Carol Danvers and then Night of the Goblining her and, and dazing her and then uh, attacking and dazing Nightcrawler. And uh, things turned around at that point for me. Uh, but I, I, should, I should say, I didn't, I didn't bring this up, the Nightcrawler absolutely destroyed Green Goblin the round before, <laughs> like uh, he got the attack chain started, where he could just keep attacking, and he destroyed Nightcrawler complete, uh, or he destroyed Green Goblin completely. But then on round three, I dazed uh, Carol Danvers, I dazed Nightcrawler, and I dazed Psylocke, and then I scored the field, and I had just enough points scored to win the game had i not won the game there i think i lose this game <laughs> because i think that brad comes back and and crushes me the following round what are your thoughts brad uh, i think that's probably a pretty accurate assessment yeah yeah so this was me winning on scenario uh uh, all right do you do you have any games that you want to talk about steven uh yes i sure do um this past tuesday i went back up to erie where you are to uh the griffin slayer um i had scheduled some games with uh josh uh tensher uh reason i was going back up there is because i returned an abducted bullseye model <laughs> to josh so he could give it to Nick from our conversations last week. That's right. I remember that. <laughs> there was a so, stolen bullseye. An abducted bullseye. An abducted not stolen. bullseye, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that model had its fair share of uh, adventures, obviously, going from state to state. But um, we... Uh, he was playing Midnight Suns and he wanted to run Nightcrawler in Midnight Suns. And I went back to Avengers because I was playing webs there for a bit. And then I found out that webs tend to have trouble hand handling big kaiju models. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I just need to get out of webs for a second and go back to Avengers because I thought I had something there. And um, I uh, I retooled the list a little bit. So going into it, previously I had Scarlet Witch in the list, and I said Scarlet Witch is not doing it. So I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I really wanted another five Avenger. So yeah, uh, let me ask you a question, Fred. Out of all the characters of Marvel, okay. Who has 15 health and has a throw size four or less on a wild? Uh, is it Immortal Hulk? Well, that's one of them. I found the other one. 
Okay, wh- who's the other one? It's actually Thor, Prince of Asgard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, yeah, the, yeah, obviously. The, the difference being is that Thor's uh, strike is six, whereas Immortal Hulk's is seven. And, and Immortal thought, Hulk is two more threat. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, why not give Thor a try, right? Okay. In, uh, in the Steve 3. And so our first game was a Scrolls of Mutant Madman. And he brought Wong, Blade, Immortal Hulk, Nightcrawler, and Bl- I think Black Cat. I could be wrong on that last one. I brought Thor, Cable, Steve 3, Sam, and Hawkeye. Of course, we were playing at 20 points. Cable seems to be a staple with Steve 3 with me. I mean, so, he, he's fantastic. He, like, Cable is amazing. And under what? Steve 3, you can almost guarantee incinerate. Yeah, so... And that's kind of what happened. So uh, his Immortal Hulk came to get the uh, one scroll in the middle. And then uh, I did Avengers Assemble with Cable and uh, Thor. So I moved that short. And then uh, Cable fired off his gun at uh, Immortal Hulk. Um, Got a hit, so he changed one of his to a wild. Uh, Did enough damage that he then threw a size four at him. And he used his brace for impact, obviously. And then I fired off again to put some more damage into him. And then Thor came up with one strike. And he uh, spent the power to get his throw off. Um, I had done a little chip damage, like one or two into, uh, into Nightcrawler. And I then threw Hulk into Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler dazes. And then I had enough power to throw Hulk into Wong. Wong dazes. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but it's his play pattern is exactly like Immortal Hulk. It's just that he doesn't have the immortality token. But I, I I'm kind of falling in love with him under Steve 3. So I activate again with priority and I do the same pattern. I daze Hulk, but unlike Immortal Hulk's throw, which which happens after the damage is dealt, the throw happens before damage is dealt. So that's uh-huh. a big that's a big key. So I did the same pattern. I threw Hulk into Wong, and he Wong's off the table, and then I threw uh, Hulk into Nightcrawler, and almost do him in, and then just follow up into Nightcrawler. And it was just like it just he just evaporated people and he was really really good into the big stuff holy moly you're right like thor thor is someone who i i people play thor thor's good but he's someone that i don't see on the table all that often and it's kind of surprising because he's he's really a fantastic five threat model especially after the rework the other thing the other thing is uh later when hulk got his immortality token he started attacking into Thor, and then Cable's around, right? And I just up his defense dice by two, and he's a lot more survivable. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there is that. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty nifty little little three uh, triangle of models is uh, Cable, uh, Captain America three, and mm. I I guess it's technically Captain America four and uh thor i've never i'm surprised i don't see that more often (laughs) and then steve can follow up by you know because his spender when he gets it off adds dice according to the size of the character so he's getting into big guys too yeah yeah what is it nine into hulk because it's base five plus four that's correct yeah so he's not great he's not bad as a backup right so yeah um i took hawkeye and sam who were becoming favorites with Steve also. Uh, Sam did a lot of control on size two characters, uh, getting them off points. And Hawkeye was just, you know, being annoying to people. So, um, you, you, th- this is this is interesting. Uh, everyone in the Charleston meta has now played against Borka's uh, Captain America 4 list. And his list is 
completely different and also terrifying. <laughs> like, it's amazing how deep the roster is that for Avengers. And mm -hmm. the new Captain America is so... He's great. Like, he's so good. Yeah, well, he. I think he's the best at uh, enhancing your team. So... Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I learned. So, uh, on to the second game. I decided to switch things up and go in, uh, with out Steve and without Thor and I went with Sam um, he was playing Midnight Suns again uh, we were on Hammers and Spider Infected so we were at 18 locked at it um, Blade Nightcrawler yeah. Ghost Rider Wong I believe Wait. Cat again hold on you were at Hammers and Spider Infected uh, those are both extracts no I, I'm at the uh, not Spider Infected but the Spider, spider Portals, portals? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. Yeah, you're. I spy too many spiders. Anyway, uh, there are. I agree. <laughs> but yes, so I went yeah. With, okay. I went with uh, Sam, Hawkeye, Magic, and Deadpool. Magic had reserved member on her, and then um, and then I had Hulkbuster, and Josh won this game pretty handily. Uh, his Nightcrawler went to the Hulkbuster, and he got those triggers onto Hulkbuster, and Hulkbuster went down pretty quick. Oh. So, but, I mean, that a Nightcrawler, when he gets the... If he can get the train rolling on those uh, uh, extra spender attacks, he can take down anybody in the game. But right. he, he just has to get the train started. Like, if he yeah. can get it the first one or two times get the trigger the first t two times he's gonna be absolutely busted <laughs> no he did what he was supposed to do and there was nothing i can do about it and that's perfectly fine um now we did play a third game but i didn't do any uh no taking on it because it was kind of late we we're kind of tired uh, the only thing i tell you about it is that it was the midnight suns again um and Avengers and it was a very close win. It was because our first two games went pretty quick, right? And we're like, well, we'll play a third. And, and so we did. And then this game just it was a it was a brawl. It was just beat him up, bash him up. So it it took a long time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we were we weren't planning on playing a third game. You know, because Josh is like, well, I'll commit to two games when you come out. And I'm like, that's perfectly fine, just so I can get Bullseye, so Nick can get him back. And then, like I said, our first two games went really, really quick. So he's like, well, we can play a third. But I forgot to, you know, take any notes on it and record it. So I apologize about that. And that's all right. But I do have a fourth game uh, this, this Thursday at our local tonight. Uh, played Robbie. And Robbie was uh, doing X Men Blue with Cyclops. Um, he's trying to make something work. Um, he had um, Colossus, Shadowcat, Sabretooth, and Hawkeye in that list. He really likes Sabretooth, by the way. And um, uh, is, are we talking Sabretooth, the first one? Yep, yep, that is definitely. Oh my gosh! Okay. We, then, this has uh, come up the, in two episodes in a row that people are playing Sabretooth 1 again. <laughs> yeah. And I took uh, Steve 3, uh, Cable, Hawkeye, Magic, and uh, Sam. And we were on Montesi and Spider Portals. And Robbie got out to a pretty good uh, early lead. He had a 5-3 on me. But okay. I've, des I've designed this list um, to where everybody, or almost everybody, I should say, has their own movement tech. So things like displacements really don't hurt me that much. And uh, he did a cute play with Colossus. He ran up and um, got the Montesi formula in the middle. And then he did a... Uh, to me, my X Men to get Colossus back, so he wouldn't huh. get clobbered. Okay. okay. So he was up five three, and then uh, up like nine seven in the next round, and then my attrition just caught up with him because um, 
Hawkeye was dead by his Hawkeye was dead by round two. Uh, I had Hawkeye, Steve, and Magic on one side, tangling with Hawkeye and Colossus to start off with. Um, his uh, Shadow Cat was on the opposite side, dealing uh, in Sabretooth. We're dealing with um, Sam and my Hawkeye. And then Cyclops was kind of in the back holding a point and holding an objective. So uh, once I got the one side collapsed, I started putting uh, Steve and Cable towards the middle to kind of come in and close the vice a little bit. So it ended up being like 18 to 10. In your favor? Yep, yep. Because the, I mean, I I find that the Avengers under uh, Steve three is incredibly attrition based. It doesn't have to be, but that's how the both it, it's it seems like how your list and how Borka's list are playing. Yeah, it's not fancy, but it can uh, it can it can slap a little bit. So. Yeah, they can it yeah. can do this all day. Mm -hmm. And Hawkeye and Hawkeye paired with Sam under Steve is they're very annoying harassers. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're pushing you off the points and hitting you with uh uh conditions. Conditions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so but uh no, you know, Robbie always gets support, always trying something new. Uh we discussed it afterwards and he goes, well, I wanted somebody tough in the middle. And I said, well, in this situation when you have a D, I think Rogue is more your uh, go-to on on that instead of uh, Colossus. So she's going to do a little okay. bit more, in my opinion, and just be at nearly as tough, but a little bit more offense, obviously, with the charge and the power drain. So, Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it, it was a good game. So, yeah, my uh, my new secret tech is uh, Thor, Cable, and Steve. Yeah, that's a fantastic little three way, and that's fourteen points. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can uh, at seventeen, you can add a three to taste, which is who 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 would the three be? I usually, guess it depends on the scenario. Usually Sam, because he's got usually a Sam. Move. He's got a charge. Uh, he can take advantage of triggering his ricochet. Um, yep. His spender has a size three throw, which is good. Um, so he goes out and gets objectives. And if he's paired up with Cable, uh, Sam can up his shield, and Cable can up his shield at the same time, kind of like Steve. So, yep. uh, so it, all of a sudden that three can turn into a five or a seven versus uh, physical or energy attacks. Right. <laughs> so I mean, it's just it's just a good all around. And the other thing I like about Steve is that you can up his defense on Mystic attacks too. So he doesn't have oh that yeah vulnerability that's the first Steve had. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I, the Steve, I, I need to play. I need to put together an Avengers list under Steve three. He's just so good. He's such a good character. Yeah, well, um, start with uh, Cable and Thor. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but well, anyway. uh, I think that I, I think Brad has some more games that he played. I, am I correct about that, Brad? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so tell us about some games you played. So after Fred left, I played Aaron, uh, a gymnastics game, and I played the exact same four models. Uh, Cyclops, Psylocke, Nightcrawler, and New Captain Marvel. But we played a point more, so I did Reality on Psylocke, Power on Captain Marvel, and then Soul Gem on Nightcrawler. So okay. He, so he okay. get a little more extra power. Uh, yes. Yeah. I played against uh, New Steve Rogers leader he also had she hulk uh huh nick, she hulk with new steve rogers yeah nick fury senior 
Okay. And Spider Woman. That's who the other one was. Whoa. Okay. Is Newt? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Before we move on, is it? It's is She Hulk an Avenger? Yes. Yep. Okay. I did not know that. That's that's why it's She Hulk and not Hulk. Okay. Or is Hulk also an Avenger? Hulk is also an Avenger. Okay. Aaron just okay. likes She Hulk. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's uh, fair. The scenario was Mutant Madmen and Senators. Okay. Uh, and uh, Nightcrawler did some good work. He. Dazed uh, Nick Fury Sr. pretty early in the game. Did some damage to Captain America. And then Captain Marvel dazed Captain America and then moved to the other side of the board. Because she had plenty of power. Uh, You're right. And then Psylocke lived on one health with like three different conditions. Um, <laughs> and she, even though she had a senator, she managed to uh, finish off Nick Fury Sr. after he flipped. So he never got to make an attack with Nick Fury Sr., Oh, <laughs> and then on, oh, wow. on the next turn, Psylocke uh, one shotted a already injured uh, Captain America. Just straight up hit a, killed him in one I mean, hit. This is on brand for Psylocke, with, and especially with the reality gem. Yeah, she, I didn't, she's a murder machine. Yeah, she had very very low power because she was poisoned and stunned but with cyclops leadership i was able to get enough on her to make that happen uh the the thing that won me the game is i made an attack on she hulk at one point with cyclops and got the push but no damage so i pushed her off the point and out of bodyguard range of spider woman okay so i then got to daze her spider woman and flip the point yeah and that was the turning point of the game she hulk was really annoying in this game i'm glad to hear that i i, I like hearing when she does well yeah i, I just think that she does her best work when she's in a force and not so much in Avengers, but I might be wrong about that. She does have triggers. Uh, or does she wait? Does she have triggers? Yeah. On something, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And Aaron, Whoa. Aaron has a list that is Avengers, a force and shield capable. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a multi list. Yeah. I see. And then, so you you said you had a third game? Yes. Uh, last night I played against Borka. He was playing Cabal. I played X Men. Oh boy! This was not gymnastics because he's trying out stuff for the upcoming tournament series that we're not going to talk about yet because things aren't set in stone yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> but need to say he's excited. So he played uh -huh. New Red Skull. Uh, Baron Zemo, Enchantress, Scourge, New Bucky, because he said that he is, uh, that new Red Skull is an eight point model that comes with a Bucky. <laughs> and, you know, that's fair. I played. Yeah. Uh, I played Storm Leadership, which I have not done in a very long time. 
Uh, Domino, Logan, Psylocke, Nightcrawler. Uh, okay. On the first turn, uh, he did not deploy anyone across from Domino, so she just got to go grab a hammer and sit on a riot. Unmolested. Mm-hmm. Uh, Storm was on my home D. Uh, on the other side, he had put Baron Zemo and Scourge. And I moved up Logan and made an attack on Baron Zemo and dazed him and took his hammer. Oh, no. Yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> okay. But he does get two rerolls because he didn't have any friends nearby. And then on his uh-huh. his, his home D, he, had, he ended up with Red Skull, Winter Soldier, and Enchantress. And I that had... That is a lot sitting on one on your back point yeah i i moved psylocke up where she could make attacks the next turn but she was within range three of all his people and mm-hmm. enchantress even got to make an attack and nightcrawler moved up and made an attack on uh winter soldier and i was like at first i was like this is brilliant i have two models ready to go attack his people I have control of my places and and like I got that days on Baron Zemo. And then we scored five to two. And I was like, oh no, my models are way too close to his models. I didn't need to do that. <laughs> uh and I paid for it. Baron Zemo actually charged and one shotted uh Storm on my home D. Yep, yep. And then he attacked Nightcrawler. And uh, Nightcrawler lived. So I made a couple of attacks. I I had plenty of power at that point because I only had two health left, but I was bleeding. Uh, so I made some attacks on Baron Zemo. And then I ended up back on the back D where storm used to be but she got dazed and uh then he went with red skull and dazed psylocke and moved teleported baron zemo back uh so that he was out of harm's way and then logan oh, man. <laughs> logan charged attacked baron zemo threw him into winter soldier and then got a beam on uh, Baron Zemo, Winter Soldier, and Enchantress. He dazed. Oh. He killed Baron Zemo. Maybe. That might have been at the start of the next turn that I killed Baron Zemo. Dazed Winter Soldier and left Enchantress at one health. She went, she healed, she dazed uh, Logan because he played Dark Rain to do it. And then at the start of the next turn, I got to beam and hit Enchantress, uh, who dazed. Winter Soldier, who died. And then Red Skull, who dazed. And then he conceded. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> because uh, after... It sounds like Logan did Logan did the Lord's work yeah. this game. It sounds like. Uh, before before the last... So the first... The first beam, I had one uh, hammer. So I was rolling eight dice, re-rolling two. Oh my god. And oh then my god. <laughs> the... The... Starting the next round, I did a builder today's enchantress and pick up two hammers. And so the beam and, that oh, hit okay. the beam that hit Winter Soldier and Red Skull was nine die re- With ten re- dice. Nine, oh, nine nine dice. die reroll <laughs> two. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> and he was like, your dice are crazy. I said, I rolled nine of them and got to re-roll two. Like I'm going to get yeah. successes. <laughs> right. That's what right. Logan does. So I'm going to be playing more yeah. Logan. Cause I forgot how good he was. <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, Logan is, is crazy. I, I think now both Wolverines are something that you don't want to put attacks into because they'll heal. If you don't finish them off, they'll heal. But you have to put attacks into it because if you don't, they're going to kill your entire team. Oh, if you fall short of killing them, not only will they heal, but they'll have enough power to do all their good stuff. Right, right. So you got to come correct if you're going to kill a Wolverine. Yeah. And it's really hard to do. <laughs> They're both tough. I mean, not if you have mystic attacks, but otherwise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He hits yeah, the convocation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That sounded like one back and forth game that suddenly went extremely far in your direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Logan did the Lord's work. He he did so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Is that all the games that, that everyone has played? I think it yeah. sounds like it was. All right. Well, uh let's move uh let's move on to recalibration matrix. So sometimes we have already done a character and after we did the episode, they make some erratas, or maybe we are just plain wrong about how they affect the meta. And so we're going to start doing recalibration matrices on these characters that we got wrong. And today, we are going to be doing Heimdall. So, Heimdall, uh, the Asgardian, uh, the, the man who can see all with his eyes, we gave an A minus two. How how often do the two of you see Heimdall on the table? <laughs> I've seen like, him once since he's come out. Yeah, like uh, I I don't think I've I've seen him on the table. I don't think I've seen him on the table. I I think that when when we first did him, we were very impressed with his all seeing eyes, with his ability to re-roll uh to help characters re-roll within range three and to even be able to re-roll on crisis cards on like pay to flips but he just doesn't see the table he just never sees the table very much uh he, he he's a three threat with 11 health total and his defenses are three three and three uh and he has a the ability to hit a character that ends movement within range two of him, like as a as a reactive superpower. I I, I feel like we overestimated his use on the table. Uh, what uh, what do you what do you think about him, Stephen? What what are your thoughts? Um, he's. He's a good utility piece, but I mean, he's very, seems very niche. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like th the problem is, is that he's a utility piece in a game where utility pieces need to be able to do, uh, ha ha be valuable enough utility to be worth taking. And it, especially in Asgard, I think that he just doesn't do enough utility to be worth the three threat when the, uh, you could replace him with like Valkyrie or, or like Shuri. Shuri. Yes. Shuri does what he does better. Well, yeah. Except for the, uh, objectives rerolls. Um, but yeah, he, yeah. he's, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's only range two and she's range five with displacement. I mean, that's pretty stiff competition. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I th I think that we uh, he just doesn't do enough. Uh, you may take him in Asgard if you really need those re rolls, but you you'll probably never take him outside of 
his home affiliation. Uh, Brad, what are your thoughts here on on Heimdall? Um, I I think people who are playing Asgard should take him more. He's got limited range okay. attacks, but like Forfend and All Seeing Eyes are good abilities. I, I I agree. I I don't disagree with that. Like I, but I think that I think that we overestimated. How yeah, good I don't, he's he's, be. he's not an A, but I didn't give right. him an A. He's the third three in Asgard that you reach for. Yes, exactly, exactly. So let's let's put a new a new letter grade on this guy. So we we gave him an A minus. I don't I don't remember what I gave him, uh, but I my guess is that I gave him north of an A minus. <laughs> I probably you gave did. him an A. You did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna change that down. I'm gonna give him a B minus. He's a valuable utility piece, but he's not the most valuable utility piece. And like Steven said, he is the third three you grab even in affiliation. All right. Uh, Steven, what would you like to give him as a, uh, as a letter grade? Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm at a B minus two. Okay. And, not, not, and Brad. not anything more to say. Okay. Uh, All right. B, B minus sounds good, which I'd like to reiterate is not very far from what I gave him in the first place. Okay, Brad. <laughs> Brad was right about him uh, 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 to begin with. You could so, say Brad, Brad had all-seeing eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that is our recalibration of Heimdall. We're changing him down to a B-. Uh, okay. So, Brad, yeah. uh, am I to understand that you have a new segment that you want to talk to us about? Yes, I have um I have a game that we're going to play. Um okay. I don't I don't know about the listeners, but I love when I ask Fred comic trivia and he has no idea. So we're going <laughs> to formally make this a game. So here's how the game's oh, going to work. Oh god, I hate this. <laughs> I have three questions. The answers to the questions are a Marvel Crisis protocol character, okay? Okay. Uh, and I, Brandon was supposed to be here, so I have to modify things. If you get the question right, Fred, your team gets three points. Oh, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> then there is a hint that may or may not be helpful. If you get it right after the hint, you get two points. Okay. Okay. And then, okay. then. Normally the that's four and three, and then Brandon will have a shot for two, but he's not here. And so for one point, you can throw it to Steven. And if Steven knows the answer, your team, which is everybody but me, gets one point. Okay? Okay. Okay. I like this game already. You need six <laughs> points to win. Okay. 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 You ready to start? I'm ready to start. Okay. This character had a child with Scott Stummers named Ruby in an alternate timeline. Is it? Uh, oh, I was about to say Jean Grey, but I don't think that's correct. Uh, uh, you've told me this before. You've probably told me this multiple times, and and I don't remember. In, in fact, at Fred, all. I'm pretty sure all of today's trivia are things I have said. To you on the on podcast. the on the podcast. Yep. I tried to make yes. this one a uh, little bit easier. Well, we're off to a great start already. Uh, so, a uh, an alternate timeline who who had a baby with Scott Summers, uh, and it's not Jean Grey because I don't think it's Jean Grey. And the that's too easy. And the baby's name is Ruby. That's the detail you forgot. And the baby's name is Ruby. Uh. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say Emma Frost, and that's incorrect. No, that is correct. Are you serious? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> the hint was that Ruby Summer's body is made of ruby quartz. 
Okay, I would have gotten it there. Yeah, I, I thought you would have. I would. I thought you would. You got it in the first place, so that's three points. You're halfway there, Fred. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. This character once gained enormous power from an otherworldly being called Sidorak after his sister tricked him. Uh, 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 even even less likely that I'm going to get this. Um, uh, uh, so so am I allowed to guess and be wrong and then move on? Or yes, is it, yeah, I get one? yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. Uh, then it's not. Is it Doctor Strange? Incorrect. Uh, okay. Your hint so, is hey. that the sister is bad at spelling. The sister is bad at spelling. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, I uh, I will. I have no clue. I have zero idea. Uh, so I'm going to guess magic, which is wrong because she doesn't have a sister. That is incorrect. Guess it. That is incorrect. Okay. Uh, so now I get the chance to throw it to Steven. Yes. Yeah. Steven, do you know the answer to this question? I think it might be Colossus. Yeah, Fred was so close. Colossus's sister I was, I was so close. Colossus's sister oh. is magic, who can't spell <laughs> because she's got a K in her name. I was in the right uh place. You were just, so close, Fred. Okay. I was so close. <laughs> so can we get a score check? Oh, uh, that would be four uh, points. Four. four points. Good. That's what I had too. Okay. <laughs> Your last question, Fred. Uh huh. This character has had no canon last name in the comics until she got married. And even her first name was unrevealed for most of the time that she's been in publication. Oh. Uh. I I remember this this factoid. I remember you bringing this up, and I don't remember who it's about. <laughs> uh, well, it, it, well, it's Storm. Is it Storm? That is incorrect. Your hint. That is incorrect. Her husband, who gave her now a last name, is the King of the Thieves Guild. King of the Thieves Guild. I was going to guess Medusa, but that, uh, her husband is Black Bolt, who is the king of the immor uh, not immortals, uh, whatever In they're humans. called. Inhuman. Inhumans. Uh, but I don't think that's correct, because I don't know about the Thieves Guild. So, uh, so, but that's all I've got, so I'm going to guess Medusa. That is incorrect. Okay. I guess I guess that we're throwing it over to Steven, but that also means that we lose because yep. that was my last right. chance to get the six points. Steven, what what do you got? Well, for Fred's information, the King of Thieves Guild is Gambit. So this has to be oh. Rogue. It okay. is it is in fact Rogue. Now, Fred Rogue. All is not lost. Yep. Because there is a okay. bonus question. <laughs> You ready? Okay. Yes. What is the connection between these characters? <laughs> between between Rogue, between Emma Frost, and between uh, Colossus. <laughs> Who is? Why are they connected? Uh, no, Brad. Is it, is it, oh, Can go we... ahead. Can, can we ask for a clarification on connection? Uh, no, it's like the New York Times puzzle. What's the connection? Yeah, what do these have in common? Uh, and, oh, and Fred, you cannot throw this one to Steven. This is worth one point, and only you can earn Steven. it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, so, all right. They are all mutants. I'll right? take that. That's that. that that that, that that's that, good. That's good. You get one point. You win. Okay. I, I, I was, thought that was too vague. I, thought, 
I was going for they're all X Men, but mutants works. Okay, I didn't. Uh, Emma Frost, I know, is sometimes not. I guess she has been affiliated with X Men. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, I was asking for clarification, as in in the comics or in MCP. Oh, movie. yeah. These are all comics questions. Okay. Okay. Because okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. you said it relates to every character that's in the game currently. Uh, the answer to the character questions will be a character in the game. I'm not going to ask him okay. about a character that's not in the game yet. Okay. All okay. Right. All right. So well, we win. We get the you. You won. You won with the bonus question. Yay. You won. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right, that was fun. I enjoyed that. I, I'm nope. sure that the the audience hated having to listen to me really grind my gears against that particular. Uh, well, <laughs> Fred, I only listened to one other M MCP podcast. And they do a game on there with a with someone who doesn't know very much, and and I do like I I can get the questions right, and it is right. very it's still very entertaining. <laughs> okay, okay, well, good. <laughs> I hope that people enjoyed that game. I did enjoy it. We I hope to play some more in the future. I will. Fred, I plan on doing it every week. Fred, you can. Yes, uh... Stephen. You can recycle these questions at episode 150 and he'll forget. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> I had even forgotten Colossus by the point that we got to the point of the question. Uh, okay, <laughs> I could probably ask him different questions about the same three characters next week and he would have no clue. <laughs> this is going to this. We can do this forever. <laughs> oh god oh man oh well all right well uh, is that uh, is that all that we have to talk about before we cover the person that we're here to cover today i think so i believe i believe that it is so today we are going to be talking about shocker otherwise known as herman schultz his defenses are four physical Three energy and three mystic. He has five health on both sides of his card. He is a threat value of three. He is size two and he has medium movement. Brad, why don't you do his attacks? Uh, his first attack is Vibro Shock Strike. It is physical, range three, five dice, costs zero power. Game power equal to damage dealt and wild stun. His second attack is Shake Him Down, Energy, Range 3, 7 Dice, 4 Cost, Wild Stagger. Okay, and Steven, why don't you finish out the card? All right. He has a reactive superpower called Vibrational Shield. It will cost him 2 power. When this character is targeted by a physical or energy attack, it may use the superpower. Add 2 dice to this character's defense roll against that attack. He has two and eights, the first one being, if the ground is rocking, when an enemy character is within range two of this character uh, makes an attack roll, it rolls one fewer die on its attack roll, and then he is immune to stun. Okay, uh, so that is Shocker. Uh, Shocker, who is affiliated with the spider foes, but we don't we know don't what know his other yet. affiliations are going to be. He is. We, we know that he is affiliated. We don't know that. Because that yet. box is called the Spider Foes box. Uh, no, it's not. I, is it not? What no. If, everyone in that is a Spider Foe. It, that box is called Electro, Sandman, Shocker, and uh, Vulture. If you're going to tell me that this guy is not a Spider Foe, I'm not saying I'm he's not. I said we don't know that. He's also yeah, like okay. he's also a career criminal, so he's probably criminal syndicate. Okay, all right. Well, he probably is criminal syndicate. Well, uh, that's a technicality I, on the criminal, but I understand what uh, you're saying. <laughs> I think that this guy is pretty good. I think he's pretty darn good, if all things are considered. Uh, he is his physical defense being four with the ability to bump it up to six. And enemies within range two of him roll one less uh, attack dice. 
he is tough as nails for a for a three pointer. I th- I think that like this guy paired with uh paired with Lizard or paired with Doc Ock, and you're gonna be dealing with some issues doing any damage to people on that point. Assuming that this is like a if you're doing an E type scenario and you're on the middle point with this guy, you're really going to get a lot of value out of if the ground is rocking, his innate ability. I I would love to have a word with you. Well, Hawkeye, I mean, that's the thing is uh, anyone who has more than range two is going to get around that, obviously. And that's a lot of characters in this game. But it's also a lot of characters don't. Like, a lot of characters are not going to be able to do, get around this guy's special abilities. Like Heimdall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, so what are, what are your thoughts here, Steven? What are your thoughts on this guy? I like him. Oh, he's not overly complicated, that's for sure. He's definitely not. He's not complicated. I don't think his power economy is going to be too terrible because he only has one thing to, one superpower to spend on and then right. he has his spender so um, yeah I, I think that he will get that spender off like a, a couple times in a game probably it's uh, he will uh, well hopefully and being a bit having the ability to toss out stagger on a wild it, it is only what what, it, what wait was it six dice for seven. that spender seven yeah seven dice uh wild is uh i don't know the exact number but it's a pretty good chance it and being able to put out a stagger is very valuable i think the best thing on this card is is immunity to stun being a three point model okay uh okay uh uh, tell me your thought process i think the best thing on this card is his ability to to reduce the enemy's attack by one within range two but uh, talk me through your stun. It's the power economy to do yeah. his shakedown and his vibrational shield. So that's never going to be hampered. Um, poison can affect him, but it's not as severe as stun. Um, right. He's also good on uh, the secure uh, Mayor Fisk for that reason. At a low oh, point yeah. cost. You're correct. That uh, he would he is going to be good on that uh, scenario. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts here, Brad? Um, I, I think that martial artist is better than if the ground is rocking. But I appreciate that they're trying new things. I, I yeah, you're correct. It is. He's yeah. not a martial artist. No. Like, uh, that's, it's a, still, that's a pretty rare ability. It, it's not that rare. Uh, it's <laughs> it's still a cool ability. The shield helps a lot with that. He he is pretty tough. I mean, you're going to want to spend your power on Shake Him Down. Like, you, yeah. you if you have to spend on Vibranium Shield to stay alive, you feel bad. You want that stagger. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that you guys are not taking into effect how he's going to play in spider foes. Because spider foes are tough as nails already. They're pretty, they have a bunch of characters who are tough. And now think about it having to do damage to Rhino when Rhino reduces by one and you're rolling one less dice. Because I've run Shocker in as my last activation the, the round before. Like, I think that uh, his use is helping the rest of the team. Fred, how many threes do you normally play? Uh, normally two. Pretty normally. And okay. it's Lizard and Black Hat is usually the two and, threes okay. that I play. And are you going to play Shocker over Lizard and Black Cat? No. <laughs> okay, well then. The answer is no. I think he's not as good as either one. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh huh. So, uh, I, all right. So let me talk and this there, through. There lies the I problem think... with splash characters. 
Yes, yes. I think that Shocker is going to allow spider foes to go wider. Having Shocker as an option would mean that I can now probably play three three threat models. Like Because three three threats is nine points. Plus, either Doc Ock or Green Goblin puts me at 13 points. So at 15 points, I could toss in Bullseye, and that is a rather tough, scenario-focused 15 points. I think that that's a pretty nasty 15 points, where I'm going to, assuming that I'm playing against, a lot of people like to do 15 points tall. What if I stagger both Hulk and another tall model, and... I have five characters on the board who are scoring me points. What if you don't get that chance? I mean, yeah. Uh, 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 listen, I'm thinking this through, and what I think is that Shocker changes my math entirely because he is a three-point model that's worth taking. Where in the past, the other three-point models in spider Foes, uh Craven the Hunter and Mysterio, and Doc Ock 1, who is also good, but I, I tend to play under Doc Ock's leadership when I'm doing scenario focus, so that means that I can't really take Doc Ock 1. Um, the, if I'm playing with... I, I think that Shocker makes it so that I'm much more likely to play a wider team than I was in the past. That's my thought process here in Spider-Foes. And I'm, I like that. I want to be able to play wide when they when the option when I'm up against like a Sam Spam or a another scenario focused team. This might make it so I can play in that category. And I might be completely wrong. I guess time will tell. But I am well, excited about Shocker much more so than I was excited about Vulture. I'm actually more excited about Vulture than Shocker. Okay, I mean, today's ga that, today, today's game is all about action economy, and he has none. Yeah, I mean, you're right. He's he's not. He has nothing that compresses his movement. He gets no no free attacks or anything. How how often have you run uh, the new Doc Hawk, and you wish he had hit and run just like Green Goblin? Uh, uh, every every game, literally, <laughs> literally every game. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I, yes. I, I, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I, but I I still think I am excited about Shocker. I also think that he has splash play because think about him in a in a team that has the ability to easily put out shock because his ability is not shock, but it has the same effect. So think uh, if 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 I shock a model and then run uh, shocker next to the model, that model is now minus two to its attack rolls. Minus one is annoying. Minus two is debilitating. Well, I mean, every every game plays out differently. So yeah, yeah, you're right. And and this is just theory craft. So like maybe that never happens ever. Uh, in in Spider Foes, I think that the only character who has the ability to put out shock is the new Doc Ock on his spender, and that has to do damage. It has to do one point of damage, and I will invariably not do any damage. How many times has it been that I get that spender off and I do no damage? Brad, I know that it's happened to you multiple times <laughs> where I, like, complain that I need to do one point of damage and I don't. Yep. So, yeah, in a, in a faction that has easier access to shock, I think that he's going to be more usable. But, yeah, the, again, this is just me theory crafting. There's nothing... I might be completely off base here. But I don't think I am. Uh, okay. 
Does anyone have anything else they want to say about Shocker? Do you want to say anything else, Brad, before we move on? Uh, no, I don't think so. Steven? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's give him a letter grade then. So I, I, as everyone can tell, I'm more up on this guy, I think, than my, my two compatriots on this podcast. I, I'm pretty excited to put him on the table. Uh, and, and I'm going to grade him as such, because that's what I do. I'm, I'm optimistic and excited to play this guy. Uh, I'm going to give him an, uh, I almost said a minus. I think that's crazy. I'm going to give him a B plus B plus. That's me. Okay. Brad, what are you going to give to shocker? Uh, C plus C plus. Okay. And Steven, what are you going to give to Shocker? Uh, I'm with Brad at a C plus because honestly, if I went higher, we would have to do a recalibration matrix on him in the future. <laughs> because I've 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 overestimated at a B plus. Okay. I think you. Know. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Uh, unless he's got a busted Rhino tactic card. Uh, like yeah, we don't know what his tactics cards are yet, so he may have. A great tactics card that we don't know but yeah that's that's shocker for you uh how much you want to bet that electro has the ability to put out shock pretty easily that's my <laughs> guess uh, my guess yeah. is i'm gonna have the ability so that i'm i'm holding out hope for electro and shocker being a nasty little pair all right uh so we're giving him what does that equate to? A B plus and two C pluses. Does that equate to a B minus? Uh sure. I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. B minus. Okay. I can live with that. Uh that is our take on Shocker. All right, Brad. What comic books have Shocker been in? I mean, he's Do you been have in, any recommendations? He's been in a lot of comic books. Most of the time he's just a duder. That's in on the team, like this uh, Sinister Six or whatever. But I do have yeah. a couple recommendations. Uh, the first one is Amazing Spider-Man 46 by Stan Lee and John Romita Sr. Uh, Steven, do you know the significance of this issue? Uh, I knew it was 46. Uh, I can't really recall because like an issue... Uh, 50 that's when kingpin shows up is he the precursor to kingpin uh well he he this is his first appearance right yeah, yeah. but he's a precursor to kingpin organization maybe i don't know i uh, i don't to be honest i don't think so he's just this is just his first appearance that's the significance of the issue um career criminal herman schultz creates a vibrational gauntlets that he plans to shake open safes with um he defeats Spider-Man in their first fight and decides to go after the Federal Reserve. Can Spider-Man figure out a way to stop him? You'll have to read the issue dun, to find dun, out. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. My guess is no. He, he does not stop him, and uh, Herman Schultz wins in the end. That's my guess. Okay. And Spider-Man is defeated forever and never comes back in another, in another comic book. Uh, that's why we've never heard of him. Uh, yep. <laughs> th the next issue is called Superior Foes of Spider-Man. This is uh, Nick Spencer and Steve Lieber. Uh, I did not fact check this, but I think Steve Lieber is a relative of Stan Lee. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Because, Fred, do you know Stan Lee's real name? Because that's not his real name. Is his last name Lieber? It is. Do you know what his first name is? Okay. Uh, is it not Stanley? It is Stanley. His name is Stanley Lieber. Okay. Very good. Okay. Surprise trivia. You got it right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got it right by contact. <laughs> it, in, in this series, Chameleon impersonates Hammerhead to create a, a recruit a bunch of villains, including Shocker, to break out the villain Boomerang from prison. Uh, Boomerang and the people that Chameleon hired 
form a team of villains and go out to make themselves rich by stealing stuff. There were a bunch of of characters in what you just said that I've never heard of, <laughs> like Hammerhead or Boomerang. Who are these people? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Spider-Man villains. Who are these people? They're not people. <laughs> okay. Wow. We got to get them up to speed. <laughs> we will slowly, as they come out for the game, introduce these characters to him which he will promptly forget everything I tell him about. Right. right. Yes, I will forget them all. <laughs> okay, okay, was it just two two today? Yeah, Is just, that, uh, just all... two today. Just two? Yep. Okay, all right. So, well, so Fred, Fred, you want to know something very uh, uncanny about Mr. Schultz here? What's that? He uh, eschews his life of crime later on. And becomes an investment broker in uh, Wall Street. I thought you said Basically. he eschewed his life of crime. Oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, that was that was bad. Uh, sorry, keep going. No, no, but uh, no. Uh, after robbing all that money, he decides that he's going to make money by investing in Wall Street. Okay. <laughs> all right. And. Uh, <laughs> Spider-Man actually recruits him later on to help him fight other villains. Oh, wow. Okay. That's that's wild. Yeah, well, it's life, right? Some people change. That's true. Some people change. Okay. Uh, well, Stephen, since Brandon right. is not here on the podcast, do you have a uh, an affiliation where you think that Shocker could really shine? Would have been Steve three with cable. Steve three with cable. Okay. 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 I, I had my own thought. Uh, if you want to get own... that shock off and that stagger off all the time, Steve three with cable. Yeah. Yeah. That'll, that'll do it. <laughs> um, I, that's exact. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking Thor in as guardians. I was thinking putting him in, in Asgard. Uh, to to up their attrition game to make it so that they can last a little bit longer and because they have easy access to a lot of shocker a lot of shock i mean well shock conditions um the other thing about putting him in uh steve three avengers is that you can make him a reserve member so if he's around a leader that's active or inactive like cable and steve um he ups his uh one of his attacks by one dice one time per turn, and he ups his defense by one dice one time per turn. Yeah, okay. I mean, yours oh. is more correct than mine. <laughs> Makes him a little bit more survivable. Yeah, Cable putting shields on him when he needs it for, like, mm -hmm. mistakes. So. Yep. Oh, definitely. Okay. All right, so uh, I guess the only thing that's left is my non-sequitur recommendation. So I've never heard of Shocker before. I don't know who this character is. Who's Herman Schultz? He's never been in a thing. So uh, I'm just going to do a game that I'm playing recently that I really like. Uh, and that is a, a small indie. I actually don't know if it's technically indie, but it's a small game that's called Chance of Sinar, where this is a logic-based translation game. It's kind of a puzzle game where you're trying to translate different languages that you're coming across in your exploration of the world. Uh, it is a logic-based game, it, which it's very similar to the game Return of the Oberdin, which was one of my favorite games the year it came out. Uh, every single time that you make a good logical deduction, you feel like the smartest person in the world. And this game gives you that feeling all the time. And it, it, it's great. It, it, that feeling is one of the best feelings. That's why people play puzzle games, is that particular feeling. And this game serves it to you on a platter. That is Chance of Sinar. Uh, it is, I'm playing it on the Switch. I'm sure it is on many other game systems. But that is it for us today. Thank you for joining us. And until next week, have fun playing NCP.